This is the final part of how to digitize any custom design into a patch. If you haven't seen the first four videos, all the links will be in the description. In this video, I'm going to show you the best way to create a hole in Stitch Artist, as well as how to get the design ready for your machine. So when creating the background, your first thought might be to use the create hole function. To do this, you would first copy the leaf, and then select the leaf and the background, go to create, outline, combine holes, and then you can just paste the leaf in place. The problem with this is that I find the combine holes function very buggy. So I'm just going to get the leaf out of the way. So if I click the shape, I can see that it has 6,420 stitches down here. If I click the shape without the hole, I see that it has 5,970 stitches. So somehow the shape with the hole has 500 stitches more than the shape without the hole. This is because the program is trying so hard not to go into this hole that it's creating hundreds of extra stitches along the outline. It's so bad that sometimes it gets to the point where it's ripping my fabric. Now you can have the whole background just embroidered and then embroider the leaf on top, but I find that unnecessary and I want to have the least amount of stitches as possible. So to do this, I'm going to create a faux hole or a fake hole. I'm going to go ahead and delete these and go over here. To create the fake hole, I'm going to separate the background into two shapes. So I'm going to have a top shape and a bottom shape. I'm going to first create the top shape by starting around here, going up and around the circle, and then cutting straight through into the leaf, and then following along the outline of the leaf. Once I finish that shape, I'm going to start the bottom shape by coming around here, straightening cut across just overlapping where the top shape ended and then following the bottom outline of the leaf. I'm going to have the two shapes just barely overlap so when it's embroidered out you won't be able to tell. So I'm going to go into my 6 to 1 scale and select draw with points and fill stitch and I'm going to start my shape right around here. So I'm going to click and then come out and again we always want to keep push and pull compensation in mind. So I'm using this yellow line, which is our applique stitch, as a guide. And here, I'm allowing for pull compensation, so I'm going a little bit past it. And I'm going to hold control to cut the corner, and I'm just going to start drawing around the shape. Again, I'm giving extra space for the pull compensation, and as I approach the top, I'm going to come a little bit short. Now I find that push compensation isn't as significant as pull compensation, so instead of coming all the way down here, I'm going to come just short of the shape. And I'm coming about 2 millimeters outside of the yellow line at the widest point, so the pull compensation is going to be greatest at the widest point. And then as I come around here, I'm going to hold control and cut through into this leaf. Oops, I'm going to hold control again to turn the corner, and then I'm going to just draw on the inside of this leaf. And I want to make sure that these shapes are overlapping. So I want to give enough room so there aren't any gaps between the leaf and the background layer. And here I'm going to cut the corner and finish off the shape. I'm going to go ahead and change the color. And I'm just going to go back and fix any points that I don't like. It might be easier to turn off the stitches for this part. And I'm deleting any extra stitches. For this part where the overlap is, you can pay attention to push and pull compensation or you can just make sure that you give enough room so that there aren't any gaps. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm just going to go in and adjust the stitches. For density, I like to keep it around 5 just because it's already very stitch heavy and length, I'm bringing it up to 5. Again, I don't think I need a ton of extra tiny stitches, it's already a very stitch heavy design and for underlay I like to make the density 32 points. 
And if you haven't seen the video I did on fill stitches, that was part two of the series, make sure you go check it out. All right, so now I'm gonna get started on the bottom shape using the exact same process. So I'm going to zoom in, draw points, fill, and I'm gonna start about here, just overlapping this line and cutting across and then holding control to turn the corner. Again, just overlapping the shape and this time following through along the bottom curve of the leaf. Right click to close and now I'm going to go in and just fix up the shape a little bit. Okay, now the bottom shape should have the same stitch properties as the top one. Now, that looks pretty good. The last thing I want to do is make sure that the bottom shape starts where the top shape stopped. So I have them kind of starting and stopping around the same spot. This intersection is a little bit funky, so I'm just going to move them over here. So I'm going to take the top shape, make sure it finishes at this point. I'm just going to bring the start there too, just because. And I want to make sure the bottom shape is starting at that same point. And I'm going to have it stop there too, just because. So when the top shape finishes over here, the machine will go right into the bottom shape. And if I press J to show jumps, I don't see anything over here. So that's how I create a hole in Stitch Artist. Now this design is done and ready to be embroidered. Obviously it's not in the correct order, so I'm just going to make sure I have all the stitches going in the order that I want it to. So first I have the applique design, which is right, and then I want the background. So I'm going to select the two shapes that we just created and bring it to the top right after applique. And then I want the leaf. And after the leaf, I'll do the stem, then the run stitch, that's right. And then I also have grow, which is in the same color, so I want that to come after the run stitch. And then I want to do the small details. I have the little holes in the leaf. And ideally, you want the same color to embroider at the same time, but I wanted these holes to be on top of the leaf, so I couldn't bring them over here. So we're just going to have to sacrifice that one extra color change. And then I have the yellow sparkles, and then I have the rusty color for let it, and then it will show the outline. And this is ready to go. All you have to do is save it out now. To save the working file, you want to go to File, Save Working File As, and Save. And this will allow you to come back to it in Brilliance and edit the design if you need to. And to get the file ready for your machine, all you have to do is go to File, Save Stitch File As, and make sure you select the correct file format for your machine. So My Brother Machine takes PES and then click Save. And then you can use that PES file and load it up in your machine.